We can boost intake of protein by including at least one protein rich choice at each meal, like beans, lentils, split peas, tofu, tempeh, edamame, or other soy foods, veggie meats if we're so inclined, seitan, seeds, nuts. We can also include, especially for children, I think this is quite relevant, and for seniors, some lower fiber choices in the mix, like tofu, soy milk, peanut butter, seitan. And then selecting, uh, when we select, if we're using commercial uh, non-dairy milks, to select milks with higher protein, like soy or pea milk, for example. Moving on to iron. Uh, how much iron do we need? Well, this is the shocker. Infants, the RDA for infants 7 to 12 months of age is 11 milligrams a day. It's 8 milligrams for an adult man. Okay, so that's more iron than what an adult man needs for an infant. Children 1 to 13 years of age, it's 7 to 10, depending on age. Uh, and then for teens, it's 11 for males, 15 for females who are menstruating, of course. And then 18 for women because they lose uh, uh, iron each month. During pregnancy and lactation, it's 27 during pregnancy and only 9 during lactation because they're not uh, generally uh, menstruating. The upper limit for iron is 40 for um, children and 45 for teens and adults. So this is important to know because we don't want to overdo iron either. Do vegetarians need more iron? Well, the Institute of Medicine recommends, although it's not a separate RDA, they recommend 1.8 times uh, greater intakes for vegetarians. But this is, to me, a really controversial figure. It was based on one test diet that maximized iron absorption inhibitors and minimized iron absorption enhancers. It's not reflective of typical plant-based diets. Well, needs may be slightly higher. 1.8 times to me is an overestimate for most individuals uh, eating a varied plant-based diet. So what are actual iron intakes? Well, this is a bit of a surprise to most people, but if you compare non-vegetarians, lacto-ovo vegetarians and vegans, you'll see that non-vegetarians actually have lower intakes than either lacto-ovo vegetarians or vegans, with vegans generally having the highest intakes. What about in toddlers and youth? Same story. Non-vegetarians around the six milligrams a day, lacto-ovo around the seven, and vegans around the nine. So a little bit higher intakes in, in vegans. However, there are two forms of iron in food. Heme iron, which is found mainly in meat, poultry, and fish, 40 to 70% of the iron in meat is heme iron. It's about 15 to 35% bioavailable. And intake is associated, however, with metabolic syndrome, heart disease, colorectal cancer, and colorectal cancer. And it's a bit of a, a pro-oxidant in the body. So it's, you know, it's definitely more bioavailable, but that doesn't make it a, necessarily a good thing. Non-heme iron, uh, by contrast, is found in both plants and meat. It's only 1 to 23% bioavailable, but that depends on physiological iron requirements. So absorption in iron deficient individuals can actually be 10 times higher than it is in iron replete individuals. Vegetarians who generally don't have a higher risk for iron deficiency, except possibly in menstruating uh, women. However, we do have lower serum ferritin or iron stores. Lower iron stores that are within the normal range don't affect how a person feels or, you know, and, and, and do not appear to be a disadvantage when the diet's replenishing iron losses and hemoglobin and hematocrit are normal. It actually may turn out to be an advantage as higher serum ferritin tends to be associated with increased risk of some chronic diseases. However, iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in infancy and childhood, with the greatest risk being in preschoolers. And if a preschooler has low iron over time, it can impact cognitive and motor function, which can persist beyond childhood, and it can also impair their immune uh, function. So what are the factors that would increase risk of iron deficiency in, in infants and children? 
Well, in infants, uh, premature birth or low birth weight is a big uh, red flag for increased uh, a risk of iron deficiency. Um, early introduction to cow's milk uh, dramatically increases risk. Use of unfortified infant formula, late introduction to solid foods more than six months of age. And in children and teens, drinking too much cow's milk over 24 ounces a day in those ages one to five years, insufficient dietary sources, lead exposure, health conditions, chronic infections, or heavy menstrual bleeding. And uh, if we look at uh, recommendations for or, or iron for infants, the addition of iron rich and iron enriched foods should begin by six months of age. Providing 11 milligrams of iron for a seven to 12 month old infant is challenging without iron fortified foods or supplements. Is red meat the answer, uh, which, you know, uh, we see, uh, you know, we see this in um, infant feeding recommendations all the time. They're often a suggestion to, you know, begin red meat early to avoid the risk of iron deficiency. And this is not the answer at all. Red meat is higher is high in total and saturated fat. It contains a lot of pro-inflammatory compounds and intake is associated with increased risk of, of cancer, of heart disease, of diabetes and of other chronic diseases. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. It would be impossible for a baby to eat enough red meat to meet the RDA. 100 grams or three and a half ounces of lean roast beef has 1.37 milligrams of iron. So a baby would have to eat 28 ounces of lean beef to meet the RDA of 11 milligrams. So how much iron is in, you know, foods that might be appropriate for infants? Well, to meet that 11 milligram um, uh, recommendation, you would need to, the baby would need to eat six tablespoons of fortified infant cereal, 13 tablespoons of tofu, 27 tablespoons of lentils. And just so you know, there's 16 tablespoons in a cup, uh, 52 tablespoons of strained infant chicken, or 79 tablespoons of infant strained beef. So it's just interesting to know that. Do infants need iron supplements? Well, breastfed infants do need iron supplements if they're premature. So one to three milligrams per kilogram for the first year is what's generally recommended. Full-term infants, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends a milligram per kilogram beginning from four to six months of age or until um, recommended intake is, is met with solid foods. The Canadian Pediatric Society recommends exclusive breastfeeding uh, for the first six months. They believe that you'll get enough iron from that but you need to ensure sufficient iron in solid foods thereafter. And, and they don't necessarily recommend an iron supplement unless it's indicated. Formula fed infants just need to, the parents need to choose iron fortified formula. So ensuring sufficient iron in plant-based diets means selecting iron rich foods from within each food group. And, and in the legumes group, lentils, chickpeas, and other beans and tofu are great sources. In the grains, the, the um, pseudo grains tend to be a little higher in iron, like amaranth and, and, and quinoa. Tap is fairly high as well. Uh, wheat, sorghum, fortified grains, nuts and seeds. Seeds are a little more concentrated iron in iron than most nuts. But in the nut category, cashews, pine nuts, almonds, and Brazil nuts are good choices. Uh, in the vegetable category, peas, string beans, and leafy greens are good choices. And in the fruits, prune juice and dried fruits. And other foods uh, that do provide iron are fortified meat analogs and blackstrap molasses. Number two is we want to, want to moderate our intake of iron absorption inhibitors. And phytates um, are, are one thing that we need to be aware of. And these are most concentrated in, in bran, especially wheat bran. So you don't want to be sprinkling wheat bran on your food, for example. And, and we just need to be conscious of the amount of phytates in, you know, um, uh, whole grains that are unleavened, especially. We can reduce phytates with leavening and soaking and sprouting and, and all of these uh, techniques. But if we're using flatbreads, 
uh, they're they're a little higher in in uh, phytates, and when they're the dietary staple and with little else, uh, we sometimes do see uh, problems there. Polyphenolic compounds from tea, and and for both phytates and polyphenolic compounds, if we eat these with meals, we can reduce iron absorption by about fifty to ninety percent from that meal. So if you're drinking teas that are rich in polyphenolics like black or green teas, even other some of the herbal teas, uh, we want to separate the tea from the meal by at least an hour. Uh, zinc can, can impair uh, uh, iron absorption as well. Calcium and dairy products interfere with calcium absorption too. We also want to boost intake of the iron absorption enhancers. So the most you know, known one is, is foods that are rich in vitamin C and organic acids like citrus fruits and strawberries and all sorts of fruits and vegetables. Allium vegetables like onions and garlic, uh, beta carotene rich foods like carrots and some spices like pepper, turmeric and ginger can actually enhance iron absorption as well. And then we want to replace meat with legumes rather than dairy. A lot of people when they're first making the transition to a more plant-based diet, we'll end up eating more dairy products, um, you know, lasagna with cheese and macaroni and cheese and pizza with cheese and so forth. Uh, we don't want to be doing that because uh, dairy uh, is low in iron, uh, meat is high in iron. So you're swapping a high iron food for a low iron food and dairy actually inhibits the absorption of iron. So it's a double whammy. So we don't want to do that. We want to choose legumes. Legumes provide iron in a form that is absorbed as we need it without being a pro-oxidant. And we can even cook in cast iron to further boost iron content.